Today is all about choosing the right turbo for your car. Many things go into this decision like desired spool, ball bearing or journal bearing, T3, T4 or DSM flange turbine housings, and most of all the amount of power that you plan to make. While there are many factors to a turbo's performance, the compressor map can be a very useful tool in sizing the correct turbo to your car. The saying bigger is always better could never be more wrong when choosing your turbo. Here are a few compressor maps. The map on the left belongs to a whole set turbo and the map on the right belongs to a Borg Warner turbo. We will start with the Borg Warner map. This can be a very daunting task by just looking at this map, but it is really quite simple. We will start by labeling the key parts of the compressor map. The x-axis, or the horizontal line, is numbered from 10 through 90 and this represents the airflow of the compressor wheel. Although my printer cut it off, this particular map states corrected mass flow pounds a minute so we know that the unit of measurement is already in pounds a minute for this particular map. The y-axis, or this vertical line, is numbered from 1.0 to 5.0. This represents the pressure ratio of the compressor wheel. More on pressure ratios in a minute. The 58,496 represents the shaft speed in RPM. You will notice that these numbers continue to climb as the compressor map moves up and to the right and ending at 117,199 revolutions per minute. We are going to refer to each of these as islands. Each island is labeled with a number, 0 0.76, 0 0.74, 0 0.72, 0 0.70, and so on. These numbers represent a percentage that relates to how efficiently the compressor can move air at that point. This is known as compressor efficiency. The line that runs up the left side here is the surge line. Any point plotted to the left of this line would mean that the compressor is too big. There would not be enough exhaust flow to spin the wheel fast enough to generate the desired boost and therefore making that compressor useless at that particular point. The right side of the map represents the choke section of the compressor. Any point plotted in this area means the compressor is too small to reach the desired power and boost. This also means that efficiency goes out the window because the wheel chops the air so badly that the poor density of the air charge and extra heat will result in a major loss in power. Now that we know what everything means, let's plot some points to find a compressor that fits your application. We need to know how much power one would like to make. While many people only go by track times, there is a certain amount of power involved depending on the weight of your vehicle. Let's just say that we want 500 wheel horsepower. This represents the number that I would like to see to the ground, so you have to add in drivetrain loss. An all-wheel drive car is expected to lose 20 to 25 percent, rear-wheel drive cars 15 percent, and front-wheel drive cars 10 percent. With that in mind, 500 wheel horsepower in an all-wheel drive means that you need enough air for 625 horsepower at the crank. We get that by going 500 times 0.25 or 25 percent, and that equals 125. So we add that 125 to 500 horsepower and we find out we need 625 horsepower at the crank. It is a good rule of thumb that one pound minute of airflow equals 10 horsepower at the crank, so you would need 62 and a half pound minute of airflow to get your 625 horsepower. Of course there are many other variables but this allows you to make a good educated guess. Now you have two choices to pick your pressure ratio. If you have a boost pressure in mind we will calculate that now. Pressure ratio is expressed by PSI plus 14.7 divided by 14.7 and that equals your pressure ratio. To find the pressure ratio, take the amount of boost that you intend to run and add 14.7. For instance, if we were running 30 pounds of boost plus 14.7, that equals 44.7. Now divide that by 14.7 and that equals 3.040. So the pressure ratio for 30 PSI converts to 3.040. This places you in the .72 island or the 72 percentile. If you do not have a pressure ratio in mind, just take your airflow number for the desired power and follow it up the map until you reach the center of the most efficient island. In this case, that is just inside the 72 percentile island. Now look to the left and convert the number for the boost pressure. If this pressure is too high for your application, you will need to seek another compressor or build the other components to handle the pressure. 
This method assumes a lot, and the biggest thing is that you do not know what your motor will actually flow. For instance, your actual motor may take a higher pressure ratio to flow the needed 62.5 pounds minute of airflow, making the compressor less efficient, because it may have to move up to another island. Boost pressure is actually a byproduct of the amount of power you would like to make. One may ask what I mean by that. Notice how this turbo will make no more power at 47.04 psi or a 4.2 pressure ratio than it does at 29.4 psi or 3.0 pressure ratio. This is because a less efficient motor will need to run more boost to achieve the same power a more efficient motor could make at a lower pressure. For this example, the compressor will make the desired power, but will leave you with minimal room to make more power in the future. You may consider moving up to a compressor where the power level puts you in the centermost island for maximum efficiency. This will make for a turbo that extracts a maximum amount of power due to its high efficiency and will always give you some room for more power later on. Keep in mind that not all motors can handle 30 psi, so you will need to take into account the capabilities of your motor and all other supporting parts. If you needed 82 pounds of airflow at 3.040 pressure ratio, this compressor would be too small and it would be reaching the choke point. If you only needed 26 pound minute of airflow, but you have to run the same 3.040 pressure ratio to get there, then this compressor would be too large and would not have enough wheel speed to create the amount of boost needed. This is when bigger is not better. Every compressor map is essentially read the same. Some may label the axes different or put flow on the Y axis and pressure ratio on the x-axis. One example is how whole set labels their maps. If we move to the whole set compressor map, you will see the words mass flow parameter across the bottom. This is followed by a formula, but pounds per minute is across the top. Lastly, you may find some maps where the airflow is labeled in CFM. This makes things more of a guess because CFM is calculated using temperature and pressure while pounds per minute is not. There is a general factor to easily convert CFM to pounds a minute and that factor is 0 .069. The equation would be CFM times 0 .069 equals pounds a minute at approximately 120 degrees Fahrenheit. If you are able to maintain temps under 100 degrees, use the figure of 0 .071 because it is equal to air at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Considering the ambient temperature of 90 degrees plus the temperature rise, we will use the 0 .069 factor. If we were trying to convert 650 CFM to pounds a minute, it would be 650 times 0 .069 equals 44.85, or you round up to 45 pounds a minute. Did you notice how none of the compressors were ever close to being 100% efficient? This is because the compression that takes place will always cause heat, meaning the air will be hotter when it leaves the compressor outlet. Something along the intake track must extract this added heat to prevent knock, detonation, and allow you to scavenge every last horsepower out of your setup. This is where the quality of your intercooler comes into play. If your intercooler is able to restore up to 40% efficiency, you could push the compressor out to a measly 60% efficiency island and still maintain intake temps around ambient temperatures. Remember, 100% efficiency means that your intake temps are the same as the ambient temps outside. On the other hand, Let's say that you purchased an intercooler that can only handle a small volume of air and is able to restore 20% of the lost efficiency. In return, any point plotted outside of an 80 percentile island means your air will be hotter than ambient. The more you push the compressor, the hotter the air becomes. So the best intercooler on the market will allow you to push the limits of a compressor while a poor intercooler will struggle to keep the most efficient compressor at ambient temperatures. You could also use other methods such as meth injection to aid in cooling the air charge. This means picking a compressor to match your desired power, spool, and application does not just mean looking at the turbo itself. You have to look at other parts that work with the turbo to find the best combination for your application. Now that you know how to read a compressor map, hopefully you can choose a turbo to fit your application. While it will be impossible to calculate everything from this one simple map, it will let you know exactly what the compressor map of each individual turbo is capable of at a glance. This map is only for the compressor, so matching the turbine and exhaust housing to maximize the turbo's potential in your application is a must. Hopefully this solves the mystery of how to read a compressor map. Happy boosting!